friends, this is Shannon with Empower Consulting, and we had some questions about two-step story problems. Um, and so there was lots of good ideas generated on our Facebook user group, uh, the Math Expressions Facebook user group specifically, and I wanted to add on to those good suggestions. So first of all, I know that there's some kids that get this right away and they don't need some extra steps or structures, and there's other kids that um, are just not seeing the multi-steps within the problem. So I grabbed a couple of third grade problems here for us to explore, and I'm going to give you just another strategy that you might try with kids to see if this one does help them. Okay, so we are going to try um, first to um, read this first problem, which says, Sarah picked 14 apricots. Carrie picked five fewer apricots than Sarah. How many apricots did Sarah and Carrie pick all together? Now, the suggestions were already read the story again. We could take out the numbers. I honestly think with two steps, sometimes taking out the numbers over complicates things. And so for this problem, I may not do that, but I still want kids to be able to act this out and to be able to retell the story. So basically Sarah has some apricots um, and this is, uh, Carrie picked five fewer. So first we just need to understand who picked the most, Kara, Carrie, or Sarah. So that's going to be our first kind of guiding questions. And then it says, how many apricots did Sarah and Carrie pick all together? So I'm going to suggest that we actually start with two steps, knowing that I have my second step here and I have my first step here. And let's start on the right. Let's start with the second step. So the second step would be that last question. So the last question says, how many apricots did Sarah and Carrie pick all together? And if I think of my math models, I would say, which math model represents that problem type? If Sarah has some apricots and Carrie has some apricots and we want to put them together, what model would we use? And in this case, we would use either an equation or we would use a math mountain. So if I drew a math mountain and I said, so this is what Sarah has, this is what Carrie has, and this would be my total. And so I want to talk about what I do not know in this math mountain. So we would go over the list of questions and we would say, so to start, do we know um, how many they have all together? And the answer would be, no, we don't know that yet. So I'm going to put an unknown box around the total. We don't have that enough information. Do we know how many apricots Sarah picked? And we should look back at the story and we should say, oh yeah, she picked 14. How do we know? Because it says right here in the story, Sarah picked 14 apricots. So I'm going to write 14 underneath Sarah and we're not going to put a box around it because we do know that. And then we're going to say, do we know how many Carrie picked? And I guarantee we're going to have kids that go back up and say, sure, Carrie picked five. And I said, well, let's go back up to the story. It says Carrie picked five fewer. So did Carrie pick five or did she pick five less? than Sarah. And they're gonna say she picked five less. So nowhere in this story does it tell us that Carrie has 12 apricots or however many apricots um, Carrie has. It doesn't tell us anywhere. So we would also have an unknown box. Well, when I look at this math mountain, kids should now see, wait a minute, I have two unknowns. Do I have enough information to solve this problem? And they should see, no, I don't. So in order for me to figure out the total, what information do I need first? And they should say, I need to know how many Carrie has. So I'm actually going to color code this and I'm going to say, you're right. We don't know how much Carrie has. And so we're going to have to find this information over in a first step. There must be something we have to do first. So now I'm going to back up and say, I know I'm looking for how many Carrie picked, but I don't know. It just says Sarah picked 14 and Carrie picked five fewer. So now I'm going to say, so what type of model would represent how much Sarah has compared to how much Carrie has? Because it does say Carrie picked five fewer. And we know that if it's more or fewer, who has more, who has less, that we're comparing. So we're going to now draw a comparison bar. And I would say, so who has the most apricots? And we should say Sarah has the most because it says that what Carrie picked was less than what Sarah picked. That means Carrie had the least, she had fewer, and this is going to show us the difference. So we're going to do the same thing now. We're going to say, so let's now plug it in. What information do we have? Do we know how many Sarah has? And we should say, yes, we know because it tells us in the story. Sarah has 14 apricots. 
and then we would say, do we know how many Carrie has? And just like we found over here, we don't know how many Carrie has, so I'm going to color code it, and I'm going to put an unknown box here because that's what we're trying to find out, and it happens to be the same thing we need for this part of the problem. So then we would say, now do we know how many more or fewer that was? And we should say, yeah, it is five fewer than Sarah. So now we have enough information in our first step to solve for carries. So I could take five and I could count on until I got to 14, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That would be the least sophisticated strategy. I could just say that I know that five and nine make 14. I could have partners. I could say, well, I have 14 and I wanna subtract um, five and that equals nine, and that's how I could know that. So there's a multitude of ways to do this. Um, I think what's important is that we're staying away from operational words. So we're not saying, well, we first have to subtract and then we're gonna add. Some kids might be able to do that mentally and be able to break down their thinking. There's nothing wrong with that, but for most of our kids, they need a different visual. They need to understand what's actually happening. And when I see that what Carrie has is this whole block has to be the same as what Sarah has, this whole block. Those two bars have to be the same ultimately. This is the difference between them. So whatever Carrie has plus the difference would make up the entire bar that Sarah has. And so that visual will help them to see. So I could either do 14 minus five and that would give me the missing piece, or I could think what plus five equals 14. I could do it that way as well. So once I know that nine, now I have enough information, I can plug in my nine, and I think that color coding is pretty important for kids, that I have an unknown, and that unknown is the same as the unknown I need over here. So now do I have enough information to solve for T? And our, my answer should be yes. And we know on a math mountain that 14 and nine would equal my total. So I'm gonna take 14 and nine, and I'm gonna add those guys together. So now I would do 14 plus nine to get my total. And then this, would be my final total and it would go here okay so um, there are some other guiding questions here on the side so do we know how many Sarah picked that would be a question we're asking in the beginning do we know how many Carrie picked that's the part that I need them to recognize is we don't know this and so some of them are gonna say yes she has five and that's where we're gonna have to break it down to help them understand that it doesn't say Carrie has five it says that she has five fewer she has five less and then these reasonability questions, just want to encourage you to keep asking those. Could our answer be 19? Because I guarantee you, some kids are going to get the answer 19. And it's really important we can discuss why it's not 19 as much as um, we would discuss what the correct answer is. So if we got 19, it means we took how many fewer Carrie had and we added it to how many Sarah had. And Carrie, again, does not have five, so the answer couldn't be 19. So we want to talk about some of those reasonability types of questions. So if I go to another slide here, and let's just try one more. So in this one, we have, there are 15 fish in a tank, 12 have stripes, and the others do not. How many more striped fish are there than fish without stripes? And so my first question could be, is 15, after we retell it, after we do it with our hands, after we talk about um, as many of the parts as we can, then we would ask some guiding questions. So let's talk about 15. Is 15 some of the fish or is it all of the fish? And we should say it's all of the fish. It says there's 15 in a tank. And so the other questions are, did we get more? Did more fish come into the tank? Did some fish swim out? What happened? Nope, there's just 15. And the tw then what number is 12? 12 is a part of the 15. So what types of fish are in that 15? They should say in the there's 15, some of them are striped, some of them are not striped. Okay, and then we have questions like, could the answer be 27? Could the answer be three? Investigating some of the what could it be and what could it not be would help students wrap their head around this. So again, let's start with our structure here of that last question. So the last question is, how many more striped fish are there than fish without stripes? So we would we could ask questions like, are they the same? That's a really good question. Is, the same, is there a same number of striped fish as non-striped? Hopefully we can say, well, if there's 12 that are striped, then we couldn't have 12 that are not striped because there's only 15 in all. Really good reasonability questions. Okay, so here's my second step. Here's my first step. 
So let's start with the last step. We know by the time we're done with this story problem, we need to know how many more striped fish there are than fish without stripes. So let's ask ourselves a question when we're talking about how many more, we know we're comparing. So we're gonna do a comparison bar, but I need to know who gets this longest bar. Who has the most fish? And we should be able to gain that the most fish are striped because it says how many more striped fish are there. That means there are more striped fish than there are not striped. So my lesser bar is gonna be not striped. And then this is going to be my difference. So now let's fill in the information we know. Do we know how many striped fish there are? We do, it tells us right here. There are 12 striped fish. Do we know yet how many not striped there are? And the answer is, we don't know that, right? So we would have to do an unknown box. Do we know how many fewer there are? And the question, the answer is, Nope, we don't know how many more or how many fewer. In fact, that's what we need to find out in the end. It says how many more striped fish are there? So we're gonna be looking for this one, which means we're gonna color code. We know we don't have enough information to solve this yet. We need this answer. So let's color code that and take it to step number one. There must be something we have to do to find out how many not striped there are. So let's come back to, we know that there's 15 fish, 12 of them have stripes and the others do not. So if we answered these questions over here, we know that there's two different types of fish. And so this is where we could use our hands and we could say, um, put our hands together at the top of our head and say, so there's 15. Are we getting more fish or are we breaking that, those 15 fish into groups? And we should have kids saying we're breaking them into groups. So put those 15 above your head as you have um, a total and you would break it apart with one hand. Your left hand would go down by your side and you would say, so some are have stripes and then your other hand from the top of your head go down to your right hand side. Some of them do not. So now we know that really this type of a problem is a math mountain. We know that we have a total, 15 is the total, and we have really gotten that information from those good guiding questions. 15 is the total number of fish. We know that some are striped, some are not striped. Let's fill in our information. Did we know the total? Yep, it was 15. Do we know how many are striped? Yep, it says 12, it's right here. So we're gonna do 12. Do we know how many are not striped? And the answer is not yet. We need that information, which happens to be the same information we need over on the second step. Do I have enough information in my math mountain to solve it? The answer is yes. I could count on 12, 11, or 13, 14, 15. I know my answer is three. Or I could take 15 minus 12, and I know that equals three. So now that I have a three, I know that that information now goes back to my green box. I'll plug my three in. Now do I have enough information to solve my unknown? I sure do. I could say, what's the partner of three to go with 12? Or I could say 12 minus three, and that's going to equal my unknown. So I hope this helps you think about multi-step story problems. Again, I don't think it's going to work for every kid every time. And sometimes it's not a model that they would draw for like step number two. They could just draw an equation. Um, there was a, a problem about, you know, there's a certain number of sheets of paper. Some are blue, some are orange, but really, and we use some of the blue. So really it was, I had some blue paper. I used some blue paper and now I have some blue paper left right? So this is my blue paper that's left. This is what's used. And so, and in that case, we just have an equation and we happen to know um, how much blue paper I started with, but we didn't know how many we used and we didn't know um, how much was left. So we, we needed some more information. So regardless, whether it's a model or it's an equation because we can read that part of the equation just very straightforward. It tells the story quite well. I still put unknowns for what I do not know. So I hope this helps. Um, please leave a comment. If it does help, um, pass it along and uh, we'll see you online. If you have any future questions, make sure you post them at Math Expressions User Group on our Facebook site or on our YouTube channel or at empower learn grow.com. We'll see you guys online. Thanks so much.